Good day everyone, I am Gianmarco B. Reyes and I will be defending my thesis, an ironic medium, the infographic video on the current state of Philippine comic industry. To start with is a comparison between the old title and the new title. Back then it was originally go the output was originally going to be a video documentary, but due to the coronavirus pandemic I was forced to change it into an infographic video so that way I will not have to go outside and get and get the chance of being affected. This already is the background of this study. Now, as every now the comic in the com comics in the Philippines actually has a fairly large impact on the culture of Filipinos. Back it does not whether it was the monkey and the tortoise created by our national hero Jose Rizal or some of the comics that were left by the GIs back in World War II, my examples being Superman, Captain America, etc. But as for those who well, as for those who see in media, comics are fairly rare now. You rarely ever see them being talked about or mentioned. If they are being mentioned, it's usually because they have movies, TV shows, or games being made based off of them, but never comics in and of themselves. As what you can see in the picture right here is the survey made by the RDBD which they are which they focus on the reading or the amount of reading Filipinos do on their on a daily basis as we could as what you could see here on the far left is the bar for the comics now as you can see over time starting from 2000 2003 up to 2012 you can see a very visible decline on the amount of readers in total the the ndbd ended up surveying 88 people out of the 100 percent of the entire philippine population only 88 percent read and Outside of those 88, only 28% of them read during read comics during 2012. That is quite a very steep decline of the amount of people who read comics. Now, many things can be attributed to the decline of, well, reading of comics or just comics in general. One of them is the economy. Mostly back then, uh, due to the due to the changes in the economy, mostly because of either global reasons or mm, reasons in the Philippines. I remember one of them being the during the uh, presidential during the presidential of Marcos. I remember there was a economic change there. That's one of the reasons why it went down in the decline. The more, how would you say, more visible and obvious reason is the different types of medias that have sprung up over the course of years. Example being television, movies, telenovelas, video games, etc., etc. Due to these new types of medias, more and more people are drawn to them as they are far easier to how would you say this far easier to listen to or react to rather than comics instead of just instead of reading flipping the books and even paying every single month to buy a new copy m movies television shows such as telenovelas often air them once or even twice a day possibly even twice a week or usually twice a week. You do not have to read any subtitles usually. 
they're usually spoke in your language. Second is the decline of comic quality. Now, this is fairly obvious even to other places, is that the quality, and by that I mean usually either by story, drawings, the illustration, etc., etc., they're fairly poor compared to other medium as well. As such, people often get disinterested because it's usually the same story again and again with little to no changes. The fourth one is the greed of publisher or company. This was one of the main reasons back then somewhere in the, I think it was somewhere in the 80s or 90s where the decline of comics began due to the fact that it was becoming expensive to pay illustrators and comic illustrators and authors due to the fact of the rising rising prices that and the fact that mm, comics weren't as profitable back then as they were now as such they had to force their illustrators and authors to work double time in order to make ends meet and the last one effectively same to the third is the stagnation of ideas as i've said not much changes effectively the same story over and over again <clears throat> usually it's fixed with something along the lines of a reboot but they rarely ever work now the project rationale is to figure out if the comic industry is dying or not as mm, everywhere we look you rarely ever see them these days now the idea is to create an infographic video to not only answer this question but also to educate the viewers other people in order for them to know what is actually the answer to this question because many people the ones usually either online or outside usually think that the comic industry is dead specifically the written comic industry now the video will hopefully have people understand the necessity of preserving history as i've said before the comic industry is a very large part of philippine culture as it ended up influencing some of our video movie shows and telenovelas in the current uh in the current uh time as of right now an example being captain barbell darna etc mm, etc et majority of those things were based off of comics and hopefully the infographic video can inspire more people to either create or even enjoy pinoy comics as this will also help not only our local authors and illustrators but also possibly give us a, another or at the very least revive one of our fairly long-standing medias mediums now uh, the objective of the study is to lay out a script for the infographic video so that way uh, the i the researcher would be able to easily create the easily create the or edit the video should all of the necessary things have already been taken the second is to identify national and independent comic authors and their thoughts and opinions on the whole idea of the comic industry being dead or under decline or is it just being dormant as of right now the third is to document the interviews and gather research related to the comic industry an example as i've said before is Asir Rizal and his first children's book, The Monkey and the Turtle, uh, things such as Ken Koi, the GIs leaving their comics in order for Filipinos who end up getting inspired and creating their own versions, etc. And the last is to create an infographic video, render and upload it. These couple limitations. Now the limitations to now the study is limited to only comics and its derivatives. Derivatives being the things such as manga and 
electronic or online online comics such as independent comics or or uh, web comics sorry and it will include information and existing statistics from the 90s to the 80s 90s up to the present day as i've shown an example being the ndbd research ship ndbd readership survey the video will show all information and answer is the comic industry dead or dormant that's the main answer that needs to be that's the main question that needs to be answered the video length will be somewhere around five to seven minutes that way it will be enough time to have the viewer be able to learn a significant amount of information about at the same time not being able to take up too much of their time that they will become disinterested there will be include information from interviews from from authors artists or publishers it doesn't matter if they are well known or independent shows the statistic of the comic industry obviously being the ndbd readership survey and the video will show clips animations and or pictures related to the comics Synthesis of the study to the comic authors and illustrators this will hopefully be able to well other than the fact that uh they would be other than the fact that they would be that they would learn themselves the history of their comics hopefully those some of the consumers the consumers they have will end up reading this and become more interested with comics as such they will end up searching up independent or even independent or uh, private comic groups so that way more of their works will be known the comic publishers uh, same with the comic authors and illustrators hopefully the video will increase the amount of people who will be interested in comics and as such buy from them and to the consumers this will hopefully educate them as well as introduce them to the comic uh to the hopefully it will introduce them to the um, comic industry specifically the written one now as for the design information one of them is cartoons as the infographic will contain a large amount of 2d animation and the second one is infographics which by its name it involves information shown using graphs as such it will contain information involving comics industries etc etc now the conceptual the conceptual framework as you can see shows the knowledge requirements the software being the being video makers hardware desktop the process is to interview national and local comic authors by the industry this also includes independent comic authors conceptualization writing video production feedback and validation the output will be the infographic video this is the gantt chart for the time of the output unfortunately due to the coronavirus pandemic this is obviously not what it technically looks like as it has been changed get the get it as for the data gathering procedure i interviewed at least i would have interviewed at least three comic authors artists and or publishers asked them about their thoughts opinions of comics in their life and their thoughts and opinions on the current state of the comic industry as a whole specifically the printed and these are the interview questions that i gave them this is in order to not only learn about how they ended up becoming philippine comic authors but also know what inspired them to be one as well as their opinions on the industry as a whole this is the presentation of data these are from the readership survey as you can see as you can see right here the first part it shows that out of 88 percent only 28 percent of filipinos read comics but as you can see from the 2017 version a massive jump happened 
where 95.90% of Filipinos in 2017 are starting to read comics again. Now here is for the interview data of one of the people that I've had, Mr. Gary Alanginian, who is a famous comic book artist and writer. He is usually known for targeting, for reading X-Men and the like. Now, what Mr. Alan Gingen said, uh, summarized, is that he himself does not share the opinion of the comic industry being dead. In fact, it is the complete opposite. As back then, during 2012, he ended up saying that there was one venue that was occupying the... At the Comic Con of last October 2012, there was a the the venue that was used for the comic con had too many people that it was hard to accommodate every single one of them that shows enough that a lot of people are still interested in the comic book industry and the fact that that many people have attended comic con way back then i can assume it has increased since then over the years now as for the design materials needed or used I used a desktop in order to create the video documentary, Microsoft Word to create the script as well as a manuscript, Biteable and Render Forest are online. Video editors, that's what I used to create the infographic. The reason why is that I unfortunately was not able to have uh, After Effects be functioning during this and the Movavi video editor to use as a final editing for the entire video in and of itself. Design method is to pre-production, preparation of research, scheduling the interviews, and searching of video applications to create the infographic video. Now during the actual production, I was gaining, I was gathering information, I was script writing, interviewing the people that I have chosen or those that have agreed to be interviewed as well as the starting of the production of the infographic video. Now the post-production is the finalization of the uh, video itself, the output, editing, dubbing, sound design, rendering, and of course upload. The design studies concepts is to the concepts. These are the two concepts that I have chosen for the output. I ended up choosing the second one as I, in my opinion, it is far cooler to the eyes and it is less painful to, well, easier to look at, more pleasant to look at. These are the design outputs that I've chosen. The first on the left is a, the first on the left is the title card for the start of the infographic. Second and third are basically title cards to separate the video in order for the audience to know what comes next. The one on the left is an example of one of the graphs shown part of the part of the infographic tells people information. The second part is one of the images used in the infographic video. I, 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 the reason why I used images is that they are far more authentic as well as they show a bit of history on the topic that is being placed on it. And the last are video clips that are used that have correlation with the text on the screen. And as for the research conclusion, as for what uh, Sir Gary ended up saying is that due to the amount of information that we received, example being the NDBD research, research survey of the of 2017 along with what Mr. Gary Allen Gingen said the comic industry is not dead far from it it is actually starting to increase exponentially this is in due thanks to the comic industry effectively spreading to a far broader audience an example being the <laughs> the Marvel Cinematic Universe, essentially the creation of movies involving comics or about comics. A second one is different types of, I guess you could say, 
uh, comics or co derivatives or zeros. An example being manga, which is essentially just Japanese comics, but under a different uh, artistic view, and as well as web comics, as in online comics. Now, research recommendations I have for us uh, first start is for the output the infographic video is to choose a color scheme and consistently stick with it. Choose colors that are pleasing or cool to the eyes so that way it will not hurt the audience and that way it should be easier for them to look at. Second is to choose image videos animations that contrast parallel the color scheme again in order to make it pleasing to the eye of the audience and that way it will not be annoying to look at. Uh, three is the length of each individual clips to be the result of how long the text is in the clip and how fast a regular person can read it. Basically, keep it. Basically, have the have each individual clip be long enough in order in order for a person to be able to read it. And fourth is to choose a background music to fit the tone of the video. Obviously, it is so the audience will not be off put by it. Now, as for the research recommendations, manuscript is the researcher recommends choosing a smaller independent authors for interviews as they are a lot easier to approach as they are effectively just regular people that and they are far more available due to the fact that they are not constantly being bombarded or asked to have interviews and such it's also recommended to narrow researches to to narrow searches to areas near you or accessible online so that way you do not have to spend as much money in order to go from one place to the other you can just easily ride a jeep or even possibly a possibly a tricycle to the destination and that is the end of my defense thank you